Hey guys, welcome back again. It's just something um, I was speaking about the last day when I was speaking about Mitchell Hooper and what makes him so great. And in my opinion, and of course this is just based on my opinion, and you know, I speak to um, Mitchell Hooper a lot. I'd be good enough friends with him and he's a good guy to sit down and speak to because he's a world of knowledge. And he's a couple of things in his in his opinion, stuff that he does especially when it comes to his recovery, which we'll speak about shortly, um, that he does kind of differently, literally, to everyone else. And I mean, like, all of the pro strongmen are on one boat. He's literally on a separate boat to all of us in terms of his, his recovery. Um, but, like, let's look at his background. Like, he came from a marathon um, runner. He's ran three or four marathons in his time where he was down around, I think he was, like, 90 kilograms. And it's just to see the transition of a marathon runner into becoming one of the strongest humans that have ever walk the planet um i find it so interesting i am um, i don't know why but like, i've always been obsessed with um physical strength and that and i just find him in particular um quite a specimen because we've seen it with other strongmen you know other great strongmen like eddie hall thor big z Pudzianowski, they had this scale where they slowly but surely climbed up. I know with Pudzianowski, it was probably a bit faster than the others. But when you look back to Pudzianowski's time, he wasn't up again full-time strongman. He was just genetically gifted, he looked great, and he was really strong, which is why he excelled so fast in his career. And that's the reason why I think Mitchell Hooper is so um, gifted in this department, because... He has come up through the ranks with a ranking system that is full of really strong professional athletes. Um, and we see in his in his first professional competition ever, which was World Strongest Man in 2022, um, where he broke Brian Shaw's um, streak of where he... Brian Shaw had a 13-year streak of where he was winning his group. Mitchell Hooper in his first year broke that streak by winning the group that he was in with with uh, Brian Shaw, which is a crazy thing to do in your first time. Um, and just to see that transition from a marathon runner, a guy that used to run marathons, into breaking streaks like that in his first year of strongman is something crazy. And something I spoke about, I remember speaking to um, Darren Sadler about this, and I've said this to Mitchell Hooper, <clears throat> that when he came into... Um, <laughs> When Mitchell Hooper came into the world's strongest man, I remember saying to Darren, if you don't like guys, I was like, this guy, Mitchell Hooper, is full of shit. Um, there is no way there is a man we haven't heard of. And I remember the, the videos on his Instagram at the time, he was picking up 500 kilos of yokes with no knee sleeves, with just one little bit of a shitty belt. And he was sprinting with 500 kilos. I said, he's lying. <laughs> um and then just to see other things like his deadlift, he had a 475 kilo deadlift, he had a 200 kilo push press, and his lifts just literally came out of nowhere. And I remember saying to a few people, I was like, and I've said this to Hooper, you know, that he's lying about his lifts, there's no way there's another human doing this in su such a short period of time. But um, he proved me wrong, he proved me very wrong, because in his first international competition, which was World's Strongest Man, he became the eighth strongest man on the planet. That was training in a car, in a in a gym that had none of the implements. When he came to World Strongest Man, a lot of those events were his first time doing it, like the power stairs, the truck pull. The there was a lot of things like deadlift. Now he's practiced deadlift ladders, um, but there was a lot of events that he didn't do before World Strongest Man, and then for him to come along and win World Strongest Man is just a crazy feat. And the reason why I think he's better than. Pudgen, I know a lot of you disagree with me that I think he's better than Pudgenowski and Big Z in that is because no one has had a streak like him in this field of athletes. Um, if you put Big Z back in the day where he was up against a field that, that, that had this much thickness of fucking gifted athletes, I don't think he would have won as much. Maybe not. It's hard to know because Big Z was never pushed to the absolute limit either, I don't think. Um, so, like... Mitchell Hooper, looking at his background, like he ran three or four marathons, he played American football for a short time, he powerlifted, which is where his strongman journey began, so in his first powerlifting, which is not that long ago, it's only 2019, uh, he started powerlifting where he was a bit of a skinny whip, his deadlift was 332, 332 kilos, which is about 730 pounds, he squatted 292 kilos, which is 640 pounds, and he binged 165 um, kilos, which is 
363 pounds. And it's funny because his deadlift was 332 kilograms. And that's only four, like four years later, 332 kilograms is probably something he could hit for 12 or 15 reps just to do, just to turn your one rep max into like a 15 rep max in the space of three, four years. It's just such a crazy thing to do. Um, and then you look at his max deadlift now, which is 475 kilograms. Um, so to add 143 kilograms onto your deadlift max, especially when it's that high, when it's 330 kilograms already, and to put 143 kilos PB on top of that is just... It's just unheard of. It's crazy. Um, and then, like, he's training for a couple of years. He never put on much size. Like, he never, like, for argument's sake, when you watch the before and after of the likes of Gavin Bilton, when he used to play rugby, Gavin used to be quite slim with a slim head and stuff. Um, and now Gavin is a monster. He's the biggest athlete to ever come up to um, World's Strongest Man, um, which is unreal. And if you break down some of... Um, some of Mitchell Hooper's lifts, like when he first started lifting, which isn't that long ago, as I said, it's only three or four years ago, four years ago, um, his squat was 292 kilograms. And recently we saw his squat for 380 kilograms at the Brian Sh or the strongest man on earth, where he squatted 380 for 10 reps. Um, and that was amazing. Now, I know you can't compare that to a real squat because it's a machine and he was a little bit higher or whatever. But he has in his own training, squatted 392 kilograms, uh, that he walked out and squatted himself, which is fairly impressive when you consider that he's added 100 kilos to his squat in a short time. And squatting isn't something that he primarily works on. Squatting is only, for strongmen, it's like a secondary exercise. We never focus too much on squats unless we literally have it coming up. Um, and then here's the funny one. His bench used to be... His bench at his first powerlifting competition was 165 kilograms, which is 360 pounds. Um, and his one rep dumbbell press with one hand is 140 kilograms. He's almost lifting with one hand what he was with two hands in a short period of time. And I just think that's crazy, the amount of strength that he's added in that time. And, you know, you can throw stones and say, oh, steroids and this and that. Um, steroids don't do this. Steroids <clears throat> do not turn a marathon runner into a world's strongest man in four years. Steroids don't turn a marathon runner into a world's strongest man ever, ever. It just doesn't fucking happen, which is why I am obsessed, well, not obsessed with the situation, but it's just why I find his story so great. And then you look at his recovery, because you have to, when we competed against each other at the Royal Albert Hall this year, which is a couple of weeks ago, um, he went out and he did a 300, no, he did out, he went out and did 218 kilogram axle clean and jerk. Um, and that's a very difficult axle as well to lift. It was a lot different to mine, which kind of threw me off a bit. Um, well, mine is actually quite short, whereas the one at Giants Live, is, it's very long. It's almost, um, I'm not sure the length of the bar, but it's a really long bar. And that makes a difference when you're trying to balance it when it's on your chest, it kind of goes side to side. Um, but we saw Mitchell Hooper do the world record. He cleaned the press and missed and cleaned the press 218 and pressed it eventually. Got it in his second lift. Came backstage, wasn't even out of breath. Started warming up for deadlift straight away. That's the thing with Giants Live is you do not get time to sit around. It's literally event, 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 event. Um, so he came backstage. I watched him. Wasn't even out of breath. Didn't look phased. Didn't look as you should be with a, a world record. Just started warm up for deadlifts. And then he went out and equaled the world record in the deadlift on that axle bar at the Royal Albert Hall. And just to watch him through all the events, like he didn't face, he didn't tire out, and it's just an amazing um, thing he can do is his ability to recover, which is, I think, what makes him so strong and what makes him so consistent in his 18 podium streak is he doesn't tire, so you have to look at his recovery. What does he do for his recovery? And I've spoken to him about this a couple of times, and he's fairly open about his opinion. Mitchell Hooper isn't a man that likes to hide his opinion. If anything, he could do with a filter sometimes. Um, so you look, recovery-wise, he's not a huge believer in some of the standard stuff that we see, that I use myself, that the Stoltmans use, that Thor, that all the other guys use, which is stuff like red light therapy, physio, <clears throat> hot and cold. I myself use all of them as well. I use a Shakti mat for stimulation of my feet, hamstrings, back, and glutes. Um... I also have recovery boots, not a big believer in recovery boots, <clears throat> but, you know, it's like someone massaging their legs, which is nice from time to time. Um, and so then you see that he doesn't do any of that stuff. His recovery is 
um, making sure that he's quality sleep, which is a decent point to make. Um, managing your stress levels, again, it's a decent point to make. Uh, like if you're fighting with your girlfriend or you're fighting with someone or you've something going on, it's very hard to focus on something else. So making sure your home life and your everything else is right kind of completes a really good um, cycle and training. Um, but his source of recovery is, and it's funny because I would disagree with him on it, is literally just walking. His walking is, his act of recovery is what he calls it, which is basically just walking. Um, and he's told me that, that that's what he does for recovery is he walks and it's a great way of recovery. I'm not disputing that. Um, it's just he does not believe in stuff like physio for argument's sake. I think physio is such a benefit. Um, now, this could be maybe because as well, he hasn't seen a massive injury yet. And I touch wood that he doesn't see any injuries. I'm a huge fan of um, people like him. Just are just massive um, strength athletes that are capable of these crazy lifts. And it's just more impressive when you see that he's not that actually that big as i stated before he's 6'3 he's 315 20 pounds ish 145 kilogram body weight he's not that big in terms of um strongman um and just see the, the the strength that he can develop in any of his lifts is crazy um so for him to say that he's not a big believer in recovery and stuff was weird and it just goes to show that maybe all the stuff that we do the red light the physio the hot and cold the shakti mat <laughs> all that shit is just what it is it's just gimmicky shit um but it'd be interesting to see how he he will deal with a serious enough now i know he's had trouble with his glute in the past um i wonder if he got physio for that probably has um but he, he doesn't get any of this stuff which is amazing so just to see a guy from marathon running to turn into world's strongest man is a crazy thing, in my opinion. Um, and I don't think he's done yet. I think in a short time we're going to see him ex excel and win more. I think he could win. Um, there's an equal chance as there would be for Tom Stoltman in winning a, another world's strongest man title. In conclusion to that, and um, I've said to Mitchell Hooper, he's a lucky man and he agrees he is a lucky man. He's just so lucky in terms of his genetic makeup. And that's all it is. It's literally, he's a genetic freak. He's someone we haven't seen a strongman before. And I, for one, I'm looking forward to seeing him um, in the future, seeing what other records. I'd like to see him have a crack at the deadlift record. We've seen in the past, when he wasn't as strong as he is now, he deadlifted 475. I think if there was enough money put on the table, I think, and he was solely, um, like Graham Hicks is doing, if he completely just gave in to only deadlifting and work on his deadlift, I think he's a man that would be in the um, shout for breaking the, the deadlift record. Um, other than that, all we can do is sit back and watch the man and see him break some more records and see him win more titles. And I, I can say I'm just a huge fan of guys like that. Anyway, guys, that is, I know we're no closer to why he is strong, but there are some things that, about his recovery and stuff that you can maybe use yourself. Anyway, guys, thank you. Make sure you subscribe and do all the other stuff. Thank you.